Good morning everybody and welcome to day one of the Stay Home Reading Rush. I'm really excited to do my first reading vlog on this channel and also to read four books in four days. Of course most of them are graphic novels but I didn't want to overwhelm myself. I'm just excited to read. So today is Thursday and I work from home so the only times that I will have today to read are during my one hour lunch break and after work between a few different things and so let me show you what I'm gonna read. This is my Stay Home Reading Rush TBR minus one book which is on my phone and that is Rascal. I think today I'm gonna start with Let's Make Ramen. It just it seems like I can get through this in one day and I need an easy book to get through on a Thursday where I'm working most of the day. Plus, it looks delicious. <laughs> Would any of you be interested in seeing my stay-at-home work outfit for today? I call this outfit, she is beauty, she is grace, she wears leopard print for days. Okay, time to get to work. I will see you guys at lunch. Hello! It is now lunchtime and I'm gonna start Let's Make Ramen! I'm really excited to I was gonna say brush up on my cooking skills, but I should say enhance my cooking skills because I have very small cooking skills. So, I'm excited. So my goals today are to finish one book, the book that I was reading yesterday, which is Let's Make Ramen, which I'm really liking so far. My thoughts on it, there's a lot more going into making ramen than I thought, like a lot more. I knew there was a lot. I didn't know it was this much. I didn't know how, I had no idea how much time goes into just making the broth itself. Wow. There's also other things in there that I wasn't expecting, like uh, how to politely eat your ramen. Uh, because I didn't know that it was rude to rub your chopsticks together. Apparently it's rude and I didn't know that until I read this book. Anyway, my goal is to finish that book. My other goals are to just get as much work done as I can without stressing out about it and having a bit of a self-care day. Today's outfit of the day is called Self-Care Friday in a onesie. Yeah. Okay, Kitty has come to inform me that it is in fact dinner time. <laughs> finished Let's Make Ramen and it was very, very good. A lot of it went over my head because, like I said before, I'm just an okay cook and that's actually a little bit more positive of a, of a self-review of my own cooking than it should be. I have lit things on fire before. From the point of view of someone who is just an okay cook, but someone who loves food a lot, especially ramen, this was a very fascinating book. A lot more goes into ramen making than I thought. I didn't know very much, okay, I don't know anything about what it's like to make ramen, which is why I thought, hmm, maybe if I read this, I could make ramen and maybe it won't taste like 
I know I can make ramen if I really apply myself and spend a lot of time trying to perfect each component of the ramen making process. Could I make ramen tomorrow? No. Um, not unless it's top ramen. I could not make ramen like the ramen that was described in this book for a very long time. They suggested trying out different components at a time and uh, making each component as good as it can be before moving on to the next one because if you try it all at once you're going to burn out and it takes a very long time to make all of the components anyway and there are there is a lot of room to mess up in this ramen making process so I would love to learn how to make ramen but I think it will take me some time and I think I'm going to maybe start with learning how to make some aspects of ramen rather than the entire everything, noodles from scratch, broth from scratch, etc. Other things about the book, it goes into, like I said, it goes into the history of ramen. It's a very brief history. Uh, it goes into some, uh, some famous chefs who have created different ramen dishes. At the very end of the book, it also goes into if you're not a chef and you don't have the cooking skills or the time or the resources, what you can do at home to enhance your ramen making experience, which was great for me. And it was a great book and the, the illustrations are so good and tasty. <laughs> the illustrator of this book actually specializes in drawing food specifically. And the writer of this book, Hugh Amano, is a ramen chef, of course. The experience of sitting down to read a cookbook, I've never done that before, so I can't really compare it to anything else in that sense, but just reading that book was very calming and very interesting and very eye-opening and I'm really glad that I read it and I can't wait to read another comic book cookbook. So, yeah. Hello and good morning. I started Big Magic this morning and I really do like it. It's less about how to be creative and more about getting past any sort of mental blocks you have to access that creativity, which I really appreciate because it encourages that you do have the ability to be creative. You know, believe in yourself, you have the ability. Let's take care of these mental blocks. So my goal today is to get halfway through Big Magic, which I think I can do, and read one comic book or two, depending on how I feel today. And then tomorrow my goal is to finish all of my books. And yeah, I'm also on cup number two of my fake coffee. If you're wondering what I'm drinking, it's actually not coffee. It's not even decaf coffee. It's not coffee at all. It just tastes exactly like coffee. Because of my bladder condition, I can't have caffeine and even decaf coffee they don't recommend. And so I found this on Amazon. Uh, I will link it in the description if you're interested in trying it. But it's basically made out of herbs and dates and and um, figs and some other things like carob and it's delicious and it tastes exactly like coffee and I'm really happy that I found it. It is later in the afternoon and I am almost done with my daily page goal of Big Magic, which I'm really, really excited about. This book is exactly what I thought it would be. It's not about how you can be creative, it's acknowledging the fact that we are all creative, we all have creative talents and gifts, and it's about how do we get there, what's blocking you from getting there, let's fix that. And Elizabeth Gilbert is saying a lot of things that are really resonating with me, and a lot of things that I did not expect and I have not thought about writing in that way before, but 
it makes sense. There's one part where she talks about how ideas aren't something that we make, they're kind of, they kind of find us. And if we don't act on them soon enough, they can leave us and find another writer. And that's why sometimes we have an idea for a story, for example, and then we see that that story has already been written because we didn't write it fast enough. It's a very wild idea. I'm not entirely sure if I believe it, but there's a really, really amazing story about how she had this very specific idea for a novel. She wrote it all out and then she left it for two years and then met another writer and then that writer wrote almost, well not the exact same story, but very close to the same story that Elizabeth Gilbert had. It was a very specific summary and she had the exact same summary minus a few points. Regardless of whether or not you believe it, because I'm, I'm not entirely sure if I believe it, but it is an idea where I don't want the ideas to leave me and find someone else unless they are not meant for me, but if they are meant for me I would like to work on those ideas. Okay, so I am almost at my daily page goal for Big Magic, which I'm really excited about. Uh, I have not read this much in a day in a very long time. This book has really been very eye-opening for me and very helpful in me trying to get to where I need to be in getting past all of my fears and insecurities about my writing. I think all of those fears and insecurities came from the fact that I am four years approximately out of my graduate degree and so I don't have that formal schooling anymore every day and I am all on my own and I I don't feel good enough all on my own but that is not true we are all creative spirits we all have it within us to create something wonderful and magical and so I'm really glad that I'm reading this right now So I did get to my page goal for Big Magic and it's really helping me relax and be patient with my writing process and to enjoy it most importantly and to not pressure myself so much. So I didn't get to my comic books today yet, but Rascal doesn't look like too long of a story. So my goal is to, after I'm done with a few other things tonight, I'm going to read Rascal in bed with my kitty cat. afternoon everyone. It is 4 o'clock p.m. I am really close to being finished with Big Magic. I have about 70 pages left. It is just as great as it was yesterday. It's so relaxing. It feels like my mind is getting a massage to get ready to write again. So yes, my reading experience is going very well. Um, I really like everything that I've read so far. I finished Rascal last night. I read it in bed with my kitty cat, of course. I was reading Rascal at about midnight last night, so I didn't want to vlog about it after I finished reading. I just went to bed. But as I was reading, I did take notes, and I do want to talk about my thoughts about the book. Hey everyone, I am here to talk about my thoughts on Rascal. Like I said, I read it pretty late at night, which is why I wanted to save all of my thoughts for another day. So this book is almost exactly what I expected. It's about a young woman who didn't ask for a cat, but got one anyway, and it's about the two of them getting to know one another and starting a life together. The book begins in a way that you think there's going to be a plot throughout the story. The main character arrives at home and all of a sudden she is a cat. What does she do? <laughs> and then after about five pages it turns into one to two page slice of life everyday occurrence stories. And for me personally, I love slice of life stories. I love taking the ordinary and making it extraordinary and really looking at it as a gift. This book was fun and sweet and light and happy and as a cat mom I really appreciated it. It is also not a sad pet story, which we need more of in the world. The illustrations are more cartoony and less realistic and so with that you can get more playful and so the author did just that. Overall, I would give this book 3.5 out of 5 stars. Overall, I really liked it. I was laughing out loud at some points and I could really relate to it as a cat mom. There were times where I was like, yeah, my cat's done that or yep, another cat I know has done that or 
just yep I can believe that a cat would do that <laughs> and I so appreciated that this was a happy pet story with no sad ending and it was just about a girl and her cat and their everyday lives together I did dock some points off purely because I think the first five pages weren't really necessary I think the story would have been a lot stronger if it was purely just the slice of life everyday stuff and we were just thrown into it rather than giving us a beginning and then a lot of slice of life stories afterwards so yes I only docked points off for the first five pages but at the same time you know beginnings are supposed to be strong and really introduce what your book is going to be about and I really think that if the first five pages were not included it really could have been a lot stronger but really that's all I have to say in terms of critiquing the book in terms of appreciating the book I really really appreciated it and I'm glad I read it so I really recommend it if you like slice of life stories if you like comics and if you like cats and those are my thoughts about Rascal. Yeah, I'm feeling very productive today, so I have faith that I can get a lot of things done today. So let's do it. much later. I am still in about the same place as I was before with Big Magic, but I did read another book. I was planning on reading My Brother's Husband, but I don't want to rush through it because it is one of my favorite books and I don't have very much time left today, so I'm going to save that for another time. And in the meantime, I picked out a very quick Teen Titans comic from way back in the day, which has the Titans Tower on it. It is issue 14 of Teen Titans Go, not the new cartoon but a continuation of the old cartoon, but it within comic form. I don't really have much to say about it because it's pretty short, but it was very nostalgic and I liked it. Now my goal is to finish Big Magic and then I will be done with my readathon. Hello, it is the next day. I am considering this a bonus day of the reading rush because I did not finish my book and I would like an extra day to finish it, so that is what I am doing today. And then later today I am going to wrap up everything that I read and give everything a star rating, and I will see you guys later today. Hello and happy end of the readathon! I think from now on if I don't finish a readathon on time I am going to give myself a bonus day because I did finish all my books and I'm really happy that I did and I don't think I failed. So now I am here, I thought I would do this uh, final thoughts end of the video on this couch since I've been on this couch for most of the weekend. I was planning on doing a wrap-up video but I don't think I can really say anything much further than what I've already said in this video for these books already, so I'm just going to give a quick final thoughts on all four books that I read. First off we have Let's Make Ramen. I really liked this. I'm so glad that I have this because I do want to improve my cooking skills. This was very eye-opening for me because I really didn't know how much work went into making ramen and so I'm really glad that I read this and that I can appreciate my ramen when I get it from the restaurant next time. I also do want to improve my ramen making skills uh, but I know it'll take a very 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 long time to get there so I would like to just make baby steps. I think I'm gonna give this 4.5 out of 5 stars only because I saved my 5 star books for books that just are like mind-blowingly good like just like wow. This was extremely informative not just in how to cook ramen but also etiquette, table manners, and the history of ramen and different chefs that have made an impact on making ramen and wow. There was just so much in this book and I love the illustrations. The illustrations are gorgeous. So yes, 4.5 out of 5 stars. I highly recommend and I can't wait to read another comic book cookbook. The next book I read was Rascal. I really liked this one. It was lighthearted and fun and exactly what I needed during this time. I'm a cat mom and I get it and I know what it's like to have a cat and I love having a cat and it's a happy pet book which you don't get a lot of these days. I gave this one 3.5 out of 5 stars only because I would have formatted it just a little bit differently. In conclusion, I really liked it. It was relatable and I laughed out loud a few times. I was going to read My Brother's Husband for the book with the house on the cover, but I was running out of time for the readathon and I really don't want to rush through one of my favorite books. So instead, I chose a very short Teen Titans comic. It's this one. It was nostalgic. It made me really want to watch the show again and I, after, actually, actually after I read this comic, I read several more 
I uh, <laughs> I bought a lot on my little Kindle. They're on Amazon right now for a very, very, very good price if you have a Kindle. They're like 99 cents each. So I bought a lot of them and I kind of went on a Teen Titans comic reading spree. This comic individually, I think I would give four stars because it was very true to the original show and the art was pretty good, but it wasn't like a deep meaningful story, but it gave me a lot of nostalgia, so. And then the last book that I read was Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. This book kind of took all the cliches about what it's like to be a writer and what it's like to have a writing process and she just said, nope, it doesn't have to be like that. It can be fun, it can be light, and you don't have to take it so seriously. And it can be collaborative and it can be a lot of things that you didn't realize. And so I'm really glad that I have this. I'm gonna keep this probably forever in case I need to reread it again. I think I'm gonna give it 4.5 stars. I underlined a lot of sentences and I starred a lot of sections. And I think I'm going to take some of those sections and write them down in this notebook where I keep my favorite quotes. So I can look back on those notes if I'm ever having a bad writer's day and say, okay, how do I get my writing to feel fun again? So thank you so much for joining me on this vlog. Because this is my first reading vlog, I would love some tips, any tips you have for me in the comments if you've done a reading vlog before or you enjoy watching them. Please let me know if you have any positive or constructive feedback for me. But yeah, I'm gonna end this video here. Thanks for joining me, you guys, and I will see you guys again very soon. Bye.